Hi everybody, welcome to Whiskey Mystery. I'm Phil. <laughs> and <laughs> Okay. I know I'm not supposed to be shopping at the moment, <laughs> but Lagavulin 12, I saw it on the shelf of a old dusty shop. Well, the shop wasn't dusty. Well, it was a bit dusty actually. I thought, oh, Lagavulin 12, I wonder what year it is. What year do you think? Can you tell? Can anyone tell from back there? Now, it certainly wasn't priced from the year that it was bottled, because it did cost 179 plus taxes. So a bit, a bit pricey, but uh, hang on, maybe I can show you on the camera here. Can you see the bottled year? Bottled in 2004, which means this Lagavulin 12, I mean, it must have been sitting on the shelf for how long? Uh, 16 years on the shelf? <laughs> I, don't, wow. I don't quite understand. Um, anyway, Lagavulin 12 is still in blind tasting. We actually have a couple now because we have a 2018 in blind. No, 2012 is in blind and we have a 2018 as well. Uh, anyone had a 2004 Lagavulin 12? Well, I'll set that down there. I'll probably the name with it more couples disappear. No, not when it's all sealed up. I wonder what the cork's like. Also, you can see that uh, Jimmy Jazz, was it you was it you shouting about how Paul John doesn't just get a free pass to the shelf? So I have filled out the shelf with some of the more um, uh, obvious bottles that we have pushed off the shelf before. Things that we can recognize and rank. Paul John is just on the end so that we can remember what was there. <clears throat> right, I feel like I should go to the chat, see if anyone knows anything. Let's see about that like a volume. So excited to drop in on this. Stephen Goldberg, nice to see you in. Uh, I worked with the Steve Goldberg at Disney. Steve, did you work at Disney? Uh, let's see. Nice pick up, pick up on the 2004, Jimmy Jazz. Yes, 04. 2004, you got there in the end. <laughs> uh, one of my all time favorites. Mm, where'd you find this, Phil? It was in a little shop near uh, Daly City, in Daly City. Uh, Burry Burry Spirits. Uh, springtime in Scotland, right, okay. What are we doing? Well, you can probably tell I'm charging up the viscometer. So we'll get that underway and then we'll get back on track with the normal tasting. It's gonna be an interesting one today because, well, they're all interesting. What can I say? We are going to be blind tasting. All the bottles that remain are over here. 62, I think, still to go. And that will get us past, well past 300 blind bottles. That is our quest to blind taste our way through 300 whiskies. And he's picked by, mm. This one is picked by Jason. Jason Brown. For the next 12 minutes, <laughs> we're gonna nose it, taste it, rank it somewhere on, on the shelf. Maybe on the shelf. Pretty good chat. Oh, there's another shelf now, isn't there? It's all the stuff. Yesterday's glass. Dusty vanilla. Kind of what I expected. Sucks butter. Yeah, that light milk chocolate powder. Mm, milky sucks butter. Okay. Let's pour it and see what we get. Light in color, isn't it? Light in color. I can tell you that we've almost drunk all of what's in this bottle. So that's an indication that we like it or that we're confused. <laughs> now those bubbles, bubbles are really just hanging on there, aren't they? Now, normally we do this whole add water, taste shake bubbles. Yesterday, something weird happened where we don't sh do the bubble shake when we're doing the, the day before test. Not at first, we just want to experience it a bit more straightforward. But I had this idea yesterday that it was going to be a 43% or 46% whiskey based on tasting. And I just want to go in raw today to see if it still has that effect. So. 
Hold on, just just an ABV test. Well, delicious. Not aggressive at all, is it? Mm. It's not aggressive at all. And I'm quite peppery. I'm quite sensitive to the ABV. And so when we did the bubble shake, I was expecting, you know, what you normally expect from like, you know, 46 or lower, where the bubbles aren't aren't so big. So I was kind of amazed that this was clearly not a low ABV whiskey. Well, um, I feel the threat at 48. Yeah, but then I was like, okay, maybe it's 48 then. I'm like, oh, no, maybe it's, maybe it's 50. Even though it didn't taste like it at all. And then we're like, could even, could even be higher. Could it be 56? So it can be 56. <laughs> and then we're like, could it be 58? So this was a pretty amazing whiskey in that the way it impacted the tongue, just keep my eye on the viscometer, the way it impacted the tongue did not seem to be in line with how the bubbles looked. It's got a very gentle approach. Uh, approach. It's not aggressive. So that's kind of new for me. And 36, 37 on the viscometer means so not not super viscous. What did I check? Yeah, 107 percent. So normal viscosity, but quite high for a high ABV. Now, OK, let's just nose. Hmm. It was another one where we didn't think much at first. And the more we tasted, the better and better mm. we, we thought it was. So let's see if we now it is actually I can feel the alcohol vapor now on this empty glass just pour it you know a shortbread shortbread herbal vanilla um no but, uh, no peat no no peat no sherry no sherry very exposing I think mm. a bit of a uh, lemon stick speaking of a sort of shortbread. lemon lemon zest and shortbread in fact, in fact, you roast up bread lemons. Oh, that's right. The first name was shortbread lemons. And then I changed it to simple complexity. Now, I'm not getting any hint of anything sulfury, smoky. Maybe a side of sulfur and on something coming up. Gigi's already in with the Ben Nevis 23. Uh, Maybe it's coming from the barrel. Okay. Oh, there is a dusty oakiness. It does make me think it's probably older ex-bourbon at this point. Let's go with a watery taste, even though we've had a full strength sip. And then is some, uh, <laughs> let me see. <laughs> it's a flower, you go. A bit of elderflower liqueur. Vanilla, full of vanilla. Good though. I mean, I'm quite excited. More at a flower. Oh, okay. So Eagle. actually, full strength is a little sweeter vanilla, and with the half water, it's more herbal. Hmm. Not quite getting pineapple though, which is what I'm searching for. Is there tropical, which is normally what getting... comes up in the old ex bourbon? Uh, almond sweetness. The herb. Little barrel oak on the end. Little bit of spiciness. It's and fine. Um, use that as a drop. Thin. Okay, full power. How are we doing for time? Six minutes. Okay, the shine. Um, smoke or suffer. It's something dark. I think we're in barrel, barrel oakiness okay, rather okay. than smoke. Okay, I'm going full strength. Okay, you go full strength first and see. Even though we've already tasted full strength. As we very strong ABV. I was that is 50 or maybe 51. 
It's well, not. Yeah, today, but not that strong. But today, it is strong. It's not too strong to enjoy without yeah. water. I mean, I am going to put a drop in, but for me, I normally start to, you know, struggle once it gets above the fifties. It's actually it's also to suck. Maybe it's maybe it's low fifties, but just very good bubbles. <laughs> right. Nice prickly heat at the mm, end. It's, it's crisp. Okay, let me just try it. Mm. Kind of apple orchard f start. Mm. And then there's a little bit of old sour oakiness about it, mm. which maybe isn't the best, but it... Get me the bit shaggy. But then it sort of transitions into that sort of slight... Herbal bitterness, uh, oakiness, pepper, pe little peppery s sprinkles. So it does a nice transition from sweeter fruit to herbal bitterness. Hmm. I, I want more. It's a good finish. It, oh, it keeps going. Oh, for all, it's sort of uh, thin, crisp. I have to say, the first half, you kind of think nothing's going to happen. Like it could be a young, sort of 10 year old, sort of cheap offering from a distillery. But the finish is still going now. So this is like, it's like really like under expectation at first. And then it just slowly opens and the details just kind of dance along. Tiptoe along, tiptoe, quietly. And uh, it's still it's going. Yes, it's just going. And suck it back to finish. Oh, quite a lot of vanilla on the finish. Again, suggesting it's and, bourbon. And uh, chocolate powder. And chocolate powder. Yeah, that vanilla chocolate powder. Hmm. Okay, picture. So I have made it look kind of boring. Um. Not farmy false graph, no, pretty clean. But there are some wispy details in there which make me think it's older. And it has that uh, a badly green freshness, and uh, also buttery. Oh, it's really good. Mm, it is good. I don't know, sorry. It's really good. Better or worse? Let's see. Now, this is lower ABV. It's like ABV, maybe 48. So it's slightly unfair comparison. This is for, this is 46. Oh yeah, it's one week. The very strong ABV I go for today. Hmm. Because I'm, it's more amplified. There's more complexity in today's as well. Well, I can tell you this is daft milk. Oh! But like I say, it's a little unfair to come from a higher ABV down to 46. But this tastes a lot simpler. Yes. And it does nose a bit like Ockentoshin, that oh, sort of floweriness. yes. Okay, let's go. Let's go somewhere else. Where's my... Um... No, maybe we shouldn't do that one yet. Let's go to another... I can't quite remember the ABV of this. I could look, because it's on the shelf there. 50%, 49.8 actually. I don't know, there's something about it. Very interesting. So this is 50%. The it, is to do the so this must be uh, stronger. Mm. Better than Glen Mori. So that means we're solidly on the shelf. You know what? I didn't pour this, but now I'm going to. It's the Dal Yuan up by the, uh, by the Daff Mill. Now, 51.9%. We haven't had this for quite a long time. Back up bottle. But there's that similar now. 
Ich sag EBV. The Abbot is saying EBV. Mm. So the Dal Yuan, it has that nice. Uh, can you see? Tropical. Bit. Oh no, not the time so after more spicy. Okay, let's go back. Wow, it smells better. This is one that keeps getting better. Every time we come back, it gets better. It's, it's a very green, clear, sharp. You know what? Okay, just for contrast. Higher ABV it's again. This is going to be a real surprise what we get here, I think. I like that, but it's different. I think it's more farmy. Yeah, <laughs> on the nose, it's a lot a more farmy. Uh, uh, but ABV is softer, ABV. I, I like it very much. So you think this is softer ABV than this? I think it's softer. Oh. 55.7 kill Karen 8. So you thought you didn't like this one that much, but you did like it now. Certainly more farmy, or should we just say funky? Well, I like that very much. If it's 55.7, then it must be above. Maybe this is, 50, 50. So we just don't know what to do with the maybe, ABV on this. Maybe 37. I mean, literally, I thought it was 43 at one point. <laughs> and now we're saying it could be 58. What a strange whiskey. No, I'm, up, up, up. I'm convinced it's above 50 now. Because 57. The, I trust the bubbles. 56. Let's go to the bubbles one more time. I, I really like, I really like Kilkaren 8. Yeah, you really like the Kilkaren 8? So that is better than today. Now. That's better, that's where? better than today. I like Kilkaren 8. Kilkaren. Now, you said you like this more than the Daff Mill. Well. Did you say about the Dal Yuan? Is, um, there was a bit of grey, it was, this one, I see on, it's, it's on. It's just slightly too neutral. It's, it's slightly lacking in independent character. For me, it's, it's all that very sharp. Just... Okay. One more. Mm. Close. It's a, a very unique. Canada. It's beautiful. That's the that's the Bonnehaven. Oh, wow. Ex bourbon Bonnehaven. I'm just trying to pin this one down somehow. I think I, on the then, shelf that has more information. Canada. So you think this is less character? Drink deepest for a change. Okay. It's tasting more of the bitter oak coming back now. On the it's shelf. It's very, very peppery every time I got back to it. It's sharp and peppery. I think we're on the shelf here mm. somewhere. Right. Okay. This is an ABV mystery, Whiskey Jason. Mm. It is. No bubbles, no troubles. But there are bubbles. There are bubbles and there are troubles. Very okay. I'm a bit more worse, very soft. Fundamentally, though, Let's have a look at the picture again. We are talking about old ex bourbon, probably. Mm. 18 above. We got to our uh, finish. We presume it's Scottish. <laughs> yeah, it's very Scottish. It may well be a single cask or something like that. If yes. It's ex bourbon. Yes. It's probably not a blend from a, or mm. a, a vatting from a distillery official bottle. Um, so, probably independent. Is there any chance it's young? No, because of the finish, it's uh I think it's over 20. Me too. Right. 
What do we have? What could it be? A B C. But it's very sharp and harsh. So it gave me yeah. It's not sharp and harsh. We said it was soft and it's not that gentle. Soft. <laughs> you make your own mind up. Okay. We have a bunch of independents. Fifty-two point two percent Brook Laddie, fifteen year. For army, I pick up anything for army. I'm just saying. I could put the spreadsheet up. Let's do this. Uh, do it this way. Fifty-three percent Brook Laddie, nineteen year. I think ABV. I'm not doing it twice. Fifty-two part two. Ex bourbon as well. Fifty-three. We have. A 50.8, so about 51%, a 24-year Milton Duff. Um, don't know anything about it. Hogshead also. A good candidate, I think. There's, all, there's always the Dalmore, but 46%, so I'm going to discount that one. Springbank, D&M Liquor. No. 49.7. I've, I've tried that before. Uh, it's not today. I can't believe it's that one, because I think that one's better. Um, Tormor, 30-year-old, 55.8%. Um, don't see any barrel information. Kleinlish, that could be. Mm. It says refill butt, but I know what it's quite light in butt? color. Sherry, but, but. Uh -uh. Second f it could be anyway, 22 year old 56.3, or what about um, 23 year Ben Nevis ex bourbon, but it's 50.4 percent, which puts it down at this end. Uh, and my anything, first time is very Ben Nevis. Is there anything else that we think it might be? Um, oh, we need to go at to the higher end, don't we? Where's my interact sheet? Interact, okay, here we go. Oh, not to the graphs, somewhere down here. For some reason, Deeper thinks that pouring quickly is more controlled, but it's just a way of throwing more whiskey in. I don't think, well, it could, could it be as high as the 59s? Good grief, we're really struggling to guess today, aren't we? Kleinlish. Is there anything that we've missed? No, because they're all sherry or smoky, aren't they? Right, it's decision it's, time. It's, it's interesting. I'm going to put off to Africa again at the bar. Hmm. The approach is simple. It's, but it's very quiet, very sneaky. Simple complexity. It's a kind of a delicate one. And. I not that I ever be maybe 55. It's, it's slightly boring, slightly complex. <laughs> But I've, I I've, think I've, 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 again at the bar for you. I think it could be fifty. I think it's around fifty-three percent. Oh, that's not that. What are you going for? You're going for that. Fifty-two. I don't think it's laddie though. Laddie. Fifty-two. Fifty. Three. It can be, it can be this. Well, okay, do you want it? Not the spring bank. No, 15, definitely. Yeah. 30 year Tormor, 55.8. Not for me. You pick. Uh, 56.3 Kleinlish. I just don't think it's that high. 53. Okay, I got this. Okay. Deeper is going for the 23 years. 23 year ben ex Nevis. bourbon Ben Nevis. So you're with Gigi, I think. And I'm going for 19 year. Mama, for, oh, sorry, is this? For, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, make your pick. Uh, 
Okay, it doesn't matter, but I, I also go for the Esper. No, but I'm going to wait now. I'm going to wait. No, no. And you're going to wait No, no, well. no, I, I go for this. Okay, fine. No, no, ready, ready, ready. Ready, this, this, this. Deepa's going for the Ben Nevis, 23-year-old, 50.4%. Oh, that's... What... But I feel like we should have different ones. I don't even taste anything, Brook Laddie, do you? Yeah, it's not that funny. <laughs> Let's go and see if we can get some help from the chat. Because this is getting slightly annoying, isn't it? Like normal. Donna Pass, found that pretty much everything that's old from Refill Bourbon Hogshead. Uh, oh, it's great for exploring the, the spirit character. Yes. Any other guesses? Volchcraft, you're with me. With this Brook Laddie? Apparently you're with Deepa as well now. Oh no, hang on. I see, I see rumblings in the background. Couldn't be the local barley, surely not whiskey with Molly. <laughs> I think we just have to call it. I got up for the dick spot three. I don't I don't care what Deep is doing. I'm giving up for We're the going to reveal. But, but ABV. ABV is 50. Ooh. 51-ish. I'm going with the Milton Duff. Are you making another pick? I think I need to do one. Well, when I write it down, I don't be specific. Oh, okay. Well, back to your, your Ben Nevis. It's a good tick. No, it's oh, not. 50.4, 50. 50. that would probably be rounded down. Okay. The age is 24. $130 for that. It's a space cider, and it is Milton Duff. Oh, I feel like if it wasn't for the ABV, I would have had that. So I'm going to pretend I deserve some fireworks. No, but, but yeah, no. you deserve. <laughs> Not really. Okay. What? Read the words. Thank you for those instructions. So this is um, all particular, right? Yes. This is a. K&L exclusive. Maybe you can see it. No. Maybe you can see it here. No, not that one. Not that one. This one. Milton Duff Distillery. Who knows anything about Milton Duff? So it's one of 266 bottles from a refill hogshead. I think that's all we really have to know. I mean, we kind of got it all right. Um, ABV, maybe we were slightly over. On the other hand, I thought it could be 43 as well. I never, that was the 43. It was more at 48, 46. This, um, this was distilled in 1994. But every time I got back in ABV, see, we got higher and higher. Yeah, okay, nose. Initially a warming butter, butter scotch qual butter scotch quality then buttered brown bread. Fine. Palette. Thick and mouth coating with toasted nuts, dried fruit and milk chocolate. I think mm -hmm. that goes with us. A spicy lingering finish alongside malted barley, vanilla and summer fruit salad. Mm. I could go along with all of that. <laughs> now, we don't have any left. And you, you give to us. Oh, yeah. This is a trade. Sean. I think this is another one from Sean. Sean was the Glen Turret as well. From now, Sean. at $130, that is a great whiskey. And we're probably saying, I think I we mean, ended I up... Said that I, I said very much. We ended up somewhere in mm. here. 
I would say. But I, I would say, though, when you get to the 20 year mm. old ex bourbon, a lot of the whiskies taste kind of the same. It's more the experience of the ex bourbon old whiskey I, experience. Oh, uh, finish. They really make beautiful the front. So it's a bit of a sleeper. I did say slightly boring. Yes. Simple complexity. All right, who got it? Whiskey 101, no way you get fireworks. You swap and change between 20 different bottles, an ABV, and then you feel that's fireworks. <laughs> yeah, but, but the button's on my side. <laughs> a Kwame. Kwame, you got it right. I expected. Oh, a Kwame, but it's not Campbelltown. Yes, it's not Campbelltown. Maybe Roy's dissident cousin, Milton. <laughs> oh, yes. Fantastic. Of course, Tim. Right, a Kwame. It's got, to be, uh, it's got to be my side, but you can go top, bottom. You can go front row, back row, or you can go for straggler because we have one hanging around. There we go. Sean has quite the library of whiskey. Yes, <laughs> Sean, Sean does have quite the library of whiskey. What are we thinking? All right, people, somebody pick something. $4.3 per year. $130, that is a great $130 yes, whiskey. I'm leaving a pocket with a bar. Let's see. I put order another bun of this, but not enough to buy another bun. Not enough to buy a bottle, but enough to buy a glass of the yeah. bar. I'd be happy with the full bottle, but we don't have one. <laughs> Is there anything that would be less than $130 that is above it? Aaron 14, if you count that one, um, at the original prices. I don't think so. So you get back to the dollars No, I'm sure Sean bought this maybe two years ago or something when we were stocking up the blind. Sean, you very good. And you pick it and you use the blind. Sean, you know nothing. You're just blind picking. <laughs> right, take the straggler. Here we go. We are going to be at what's the number? Two hundred and forty-five. Kwame written illegibly, allegedly. Uh, let's see. Whatever you're doing, stop it. That's precious liquid that you said you don't want a whole bottle, but I said I would like it. So I think but this I is... But I like it. I put with the bar. I think this is mine, though. Oh, fair enough. Would you like some of my whiskey? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> that a fat It's a third of fat bubbles. Okay, here we so, go. Is it old Ezra Brooks 15? It's we beautiful, sad. You put it sure. It's beautiful. It could oh, be. It could be. It could be old Ezra Brooks 15. There's no point in even saying, is it a bourbon these days? We've only got the one left. It doesn't look that dark, though, in real life. It's bad. It's beautiful. You go first. Okay. But I'm sure it. be finding out on Sunday hopefully a Sunday we're getting on a flight Sunday night hopefully <laughs> not a bourbon not as strong and I don't know what it is right are we going to try and do a show on Sunday? Yes, before we get at the pain. We might be packing our suitcases during the show, but we'll see if we can fit in Sunday. Otherwise, you'll have to wait a whole month to find out. A Kwame, 2.45. I think I'm going to find Ben Beat over there. 
I'm not sure how much we'll be making videos while we're there. Um, we'll be in whiskey shops. We're doing a little bit of catching up with friends. It's been two and a half years since we've been there. I that in dozen fish and chips. There could be a fish and chips video. That's true. Once we get to Scotland, we haven't booked any distillery plans, tours or anything yet, but we'll be near Glasgow. We'll certainly be going to some shops. I don't know what distilleries we may or may not make it to. And in London, we'll probably get to... We'll meet up, uh, up a friend. I have no idea what we're going to do. Gigi, I still owe you some local barley from a prize you won about at least 18 months ago. I should deliver it, shouldn't I? GG S B L B something. Because you know, that's quite a cheap bottle now. Only about a thousand dollars at the auction. I mean eight hundred pounds or whatever. Right, let's catch up with the chat before we go. So the question is, is it the bourbon? Yes, that's true. False graph. McAllen eighteen? Uh, not a bad guess. You never know, Dalmore, <clears throat> Jonathan. Where are you? Um, my guess for Sunday is in. Oh, it is. <laughs> you can stream from the airport lounge. No excuses. Fair enough. Actually, both. we don't leave till uh, night time. Like it's a ten o'clock flight. So, Dalmore, Peter. You need to be in a good mood for the flight, the whiskey flight, or the. I did think, you know, when you're allowed to take in your cosmetics. And you have to put them in the bag. You know, maybe a little one ounce of Springbank could make it in. Ooh, fuck yourself. I don't think that's allowed, is it? Um, right, where are we up to? It'll be worth the wait, Okoami. Safe travels and leave us, leave some for us, Peter. <clears throat> I'll leave some whiskey in Scotland. Gerben, I wish you the best experience. Thanks, Gerben. I know you're hoping to get back to Isla and Scotland in August as well. Donna Pass, congratulations. Hope we will see trip videos at some point. If we get them, when you get home, that's fine. Now I'll definitely post. Whatever we do, we'll we'll post something. Maybe we'll just do it more like a travel vlog. Uh, Donna Pass, for me, it's a matter of me. Lucas, British cuisine, the least impressive cuisine in Europe. No, 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 no. You're totally wrong because you can get all the different world cuisines in in uh, Britain. You tell you about the food. <laughs> yeah, but you can get Indian the food, beef. Thai food. I know you can get that everywhere. And even kebabs. Kebabs. Let's make a kebab. Donna, donna, oh. donna, donna, donna kebab. Donna kebab. <laughs> so good. From Tim, Turkey. Tim, when are you hoping to be in the UK? Let's see. Email Roy and get yourselves on the V pub. We are due a mystery tasting over at the V pub. You know, I did think. I had this idea, I haven't asked Roy. I thought we could literally take one of our bottles with us from the list. You mean, you mean today? Take one of these with us over to the V pub and see if we can get Roy to guess what it might be. No, why not? The problem is, you're not allowed to take bottles like this on the plane. They have to be sealed official bottles of alcohol. So if we take one, we do risk losing it. Okay, the, uh, about, uh, about this. Yes, we could, but then it's not going to be the bottle with the information on. And if we lose it, we could be losing anything. We could be losing Highland Park 25, Springbank 25. So every time I thought about it, I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't see how we could make it work. It would be nice though. Jonathan Day. Oh. If we talk long enough, we get paid. Thanks, Jonathan. Have a great trip. We'll miss the shows. We will definitely try and keep you all updated. Oh, we should do a little giveaway on Sunday. Let's see if we can get that in at least. Oh, I won't be able to post in time. Anyway, we'll do something. Uh, let's see. Peter Morris, yes. Do a fishing, a fishing trip vid. <laughs> Make sure you take Lager 16 with you to reenact Roy Duff's epiphany. Ah, that type of fishing trip, yes. Got it. Whiskey 101. If security asks what's in the bottle, you have to just say you are ready for the reveal. <laughs> are you? <laughs> are you ready for the reveal? 
<laughs> you know, it could just be sanitizer, right? Sanitizer. Uh, whiskey Vault, that would be awesome. Yeah. I don't think we can make it work. I don't think so. So, oh, Berlin. Oh, many. Donna Kebab, a great dish from... Uh, created in Berlin. Is I, I, I saw right? that, I heard that about that in the Wikipedia. Whiskey Jason. I believe it because it's like chicken tikka masala is not an Indian dish, if anyone uh, is wondering. I think, is chicken tikka masala a British? I, chicken tikka is a British. I think it was, British. I mean, it may have come from India, but it was made for the British. Yes, in India. Soldiers type of, you know, the British in India created tikin, chicken tikka masala. I mean, they didn't create it. Some poor servant chef created it. Uh, we'll, we'll back to, uh, back to the old inbox. Cheers all. Oh, <laughs> Bobby J back to the old inbox. Actually, hang on. Roy's coming up. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're still a little early. Good. Put it under the plane. Yes. Put a lead case around it. I did take batteries one time inside an ammunition bullet box because they were, you know, lipo batteries for my quadcopter. That did draw quite a bit of attention at the airport. Um, poor blind bottle. Oh, pour the blind bottle in several small bottles and take the empty. Oh, that's a good idea. A Kwame. Fantastic. So the, the empty yeah, bottle. But, uh, yeah, we must do it. Deep is very loud sometimes. Oh. My poor ear. Heard it was invented in Indian restaurant in Glasgow. Could be right also. I think chicken tikka masala might have a longer history, but I'm not sure. If you get on Roy's, then one of us from the chat has to come on for, is it a space site? Yes, because I wouldn't be able to answer those questions. Does butter chicken, is that considered as UK food? Yeah, I think so. Butter, butter chicken, an Indian dish, mm. you, you wouldn't know that, mm. would you? I think that's UK as well. Really, it's from Glasgow, chicken tikka masala. Mm. <laughs> See, whiskey and chicken tikka masala. What would be a good whiskey to go with uh, chicken tikka Bourbon. masala? Bourbon, it would need to fight through. Okay. Okay. Oh, but it's really good. Who said McCallum? Right. See you over at Roy's and we will see you on Sunday. On Sunday. We will see you on Sunday. I pardon. Yeah. For bottle number 245. And I've got nothing else to say. <laughs>